Hello friends, Gerard Scarpacy here, craft hairdresser and co-founder of the Hairbrain community for Hairbrain Live number 373. Is that right, Courtney? That's right. 373, and today's a very, very special guest, longtime friend of mine, someone I spent many, many uh, weekends teaching, doing hair shows with over the years, Miss Amanda Jenkins. I think she's one of the most talented all-around hairdressers I know with scissor, cutting, styling, real eye for detail. And I just love the way she's always made things so simple for people to understand, so straightforward. So this is gonna be a great lesson. Uh, Amanda is serving these days as the Global Education Director for eCrew, which is a fabulous independent brand based here in New Jersey, Fairlawn, New Jersey, global brand. And we're at the eCrew Academy here, where Amanda offers a lot of her classes. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's jump into Amanda's haircut. She's already raring to go. Hey, everybody. Um, so, working on my beautiful model, Vika, we're going to change her look. Clearly, you just saw that I started taking her fringe off, uh, or adding a fringe, and uh, just really creating more of like a shattered shag kind of effect. It's very trendy right now. A lot of the clients are moving from that early 70s feel into more of a shattered, layered effect. Um, Vika has very fine hair, so a lot of times we're nervous about creating more of these heavily layered looks. Well, if you do it with the sectioning that we're, we're going to do today, then uh, you don't really have to worry about it. And the way that I'm cutting her fringe is a bit different. I'm gonna have her tilt her head down because she's a bit tall for me. Um, we're gonna cut working with diagonal sections going this way, as opposed to we usually do it this way or we go more horizontal, right? So we usually go diagonal forward or diagonal back. Now we're gonna go diagonal forward. If you do this type of sectioning when the hair is short, with the fringe shorter, you would get that kind of like peak kind of feel. We're still gonna get that peak feel, but the cool thing about this is that if you keep it longer, she can wear the fringe down straight or she can part it down the center and she'll get this kind of like, um, just soft kind of wispy look where it kind of kicks off on the side, which I think is kind of fun right now. So if you guys are just joining us, welcome. I'm Gerard Scarpacy. I'm here with my good buddy, Amanda Jenkins. She's gonna be sharing a really creative, fun approach to a kind of shattered, layered look for longer hair on her model, Vika. I wanna give some shout outs to some of our friends that are watching. First and foremost, Ashley Kowalski is here. Ah, Kowalski. Hey, Ashley. Hey. Miss you, haven't seen you in a long time. My buddy Steve Statland is here, Jacqueline is here, Hector Rodriguez. Hi, Hector. Thanks guys, thanks for being here. Uh, I encourage you guys to ask questions. Uh, Amanda is an incredible educator. She's got a very unique perspective and very simple way of explaining things. She's gonna be working with scissor and razor today. Yeah, I'm gonna play around. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna feel it out. Can we take a second to see the sectioning? I'm just gonna turn Vika around here. Amanda's done some pre-sectioning. You guys can see that. Can you explain yep. the concept in a sectioning? Yeah, so the whole, the whole shape is going to be based off of her fringe, right? This is the focal point. Um, so taking a really wide triangular section for the fringe and then coming through, working with, you know, working with like the roundness of the head, coming through, I'm going to panel it out. The side, the longest part of the fringe on the side will be my guide to length for my for the actual sides. So I'll be working from short to long. Coming through the back, I'm gonna do a little bit of disconnection, not much through the back, because her length is actually gonna come up to about collarbone. Um, so I'll be working from short to long. And again, the side of the fringe will be my guide for the disconnection through the back. And then coming through the top, I'm just gonna do your classic long layer, um, natural inversion type of uh, sectioning. So there's gonna be the overhang, so the hair will move, it's gonna grow out well for her, and it's actually gonna make her look like she has more hair than she does. Awesome, and we're super excited for that. Now, it's great to see long hair with a creative cut. I mean, we've been in the long hair zone for quite a while. Yeah, um, totally. But I think now that we're adding some bangs and going, dare I say, shag with it, mm -hmm. it's making long <laughs> hair for me a little bit more exciting than just basic long layers that are curled. Are you Now I know you still have a clientele in New York City. And yeah. Is that something you're seeing behind the chair? Yeah, I'm encouraging, I always encourage my clients to change their hair. We've been in that early 70s long, no layered look for so long. I mean, 
How many times can those people come into the salon? <laughs> right? They're twice coming in like twice a year. If you're lucky. That's not helping me in my shopping habit. Yeah. So, you know, changing them and, you know, clients. How many times do we hear clients, you know, they got bored with their hairdresser. Their hairdresser never changed them. I think that, you know, you always have to progress yourself. You have to progress your clients and, um, you know, just keep changing. And you don't have to like really take them so far out of the box that you know they freak out. Maybe it's just like bringing the length up a little bit. Maybe it's like cutting a soft fringe. Maybe it's just adding a little bit of layering. And whatever tool you use is going to be what changes them. Some cool comments coming in. Uh, Steven Statland, our good buddy, he says it was like having a pay cut, the trend of just <laughs> long, boring hair. So exactly. he's excited to see it. Uh, Cavilla Hair Care says it's much more exciting. Now again, we all love long hair, but you can do more with long hair, and that's what, mm -hmm. what Amanda's showing us here today. Um, we are in Fairlawn, New Jersey, which is the eCrew Academy, where Amanda and the educators for eCrew hold regular classes, and we want to talk about that in a moment, but I'd love to hear where you guys are watching from. We're always interested to see, you know, sometimes we've had people in Africa, in the Philippines. Let us know where you are, where, and, and I'll give you a shout out. I'm trying to decide right now. You saw me just kind of like flipping my hand around and decide if I wanted to go up with my uh, point cutting or if I actually wanted to start with my razor. And I think I might start doing a little bit of razor on the side. Yeah, bring it on. We have, we have the hardness of the shear here. We'll have the hardness of the shear here and then the internal will be more um, soft. So the decision there was, you know, and again, people ask all the time, like if I don't use a razor, could I use a scissor? And you, you know, you feel like you could definitely do both, but your guts just said, I want to use the razor. Why? Because I think it's nice to have uh, different type of textures going on in the hair. So the razor is going to create more of a softer look, and then um, the shear will create more of a harder look. Now, you can always point cut with the shear and uh, create softness, but it will still, it won't have that kind of melting effect with the layering, which I kind of enjoy. All right, so some shout outs in order here. Alicia Moore is watching from San Diego. Our good friend uh, Gino Souza watching from Sherry. Uh, we've got Dundee, Scotland, Rosie McQuillan Irvine. Great to have you here. Uh, hey Manitoba, Canada. Nice. That's Twyla Wonk. Uh, let's see. Peru, I think that's oh, technically cool. maybe the furthest one I've seen. Sounds is watching from Peru. Hey, so sounds. guys, let us know where you're watching from. And even more important than that, great questions. Amanda is an incredible educator, multi-dimensional in the way that she works with hair. You saw she started with the shear, now she's moving on to the razor. Any questions that you have, I'd love to share them with her. I'm watching for them right here. Yeah, so as you're working with the razor, you know, like I mentioned earlier, her hair is very fine. So you want to really be careful with the way that you're using your tool, and I think that that's important when it comes to razoring. It's like, you can see that I'm very controlled with my, with my blade. Um, I'm still working with nice structured sections. My elevation is very structured. Everything is the same as if I was cutting with a shear, um, but I'm just using a different tool. And I think, you know, pulling out different tools for your clientele makes you stand out. Um, and then also it makes things fun for you, right? Because you want to have a fun time at your work. We're all artists, so you know, getting stuck in the rut of just using one tool is kind of boring, right? Can you talk a little bit about working with the razor without a guard? We have some, a question from Terry, Teresa Scott, wondering about you know working without a guard. Well, I prefer to work without a guard because you could become like you're more. Uh, it's more like sculpting. Right, so you have more control. If you work with a guard, you have to be a bit more heavy-handed, where I'm very light with my touch. And um, you know, I really have more control over it, I believe, than if you're working with a guard. You've just got the feel of the sharpness on the hair. Yeah. So for all, it all means if you feel safer using a guard or for state laws or whatever, yeah, sure. there's nothing wrong with guards. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you learn how to work safely, you can see Amanda uses the lock and load, where she wraps her finger around yep. the shaft and holds it well out of the way. Um, but you can achieve these same techniques with a guard. We, uh, we, at HB Pro, we sell this razor, and there's a guard that slides right over it. But once you learn to be safe with it, you get a lot more mileage without the guard. 100%, I learned how to work with the guard. Like, it wasn't like I just started off straight. I, I started with the guard, with the slide guard that um, Gerard was just talking about, 
you know, and you slowly start to, you know, train yourself. And once you're, you're comfortable, then you can take the guard off. You know, I started off when I was teaching myself, because again, you have to like teach yourself every day. I would work with the shear, and then I would uh, tip with just uh, the guard. And then once I felt comfortable with that, then I would work with um, putting in my shape without the guard, and then I would refine with my shears. So every client I got to practice on, and I wasn't you know, just destroying their hair. But I think that that's the key, is that you have to practice, 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 and when you feel comfortable, then you can do it. That makes sense. Yep, lots of love coming in from all over. We've got Donna Carr watching from Maryland. Vonita Bazell watching from Marble Hill, Missouri. Uh, Brittany's watching from Nevada. Uh, looks like a lot of people in the U.S. are watching. I did see someone from Pakistan before, but can't. Oh, from Tehran, Iran. Oh, cool. Uh, Farsan is watching from there. So it's amazing to have this global community coming together for education. That's what HP Lives are all about. Today we're visiting a, 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 an actual education center. It's the ECRU Academy here in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Amanda teaches classes here. So Amanda, if people are really into what you're doing with the Razor, what class would be appropriate for them? The Razor Edge. The Razor Edge is a two-day class, and day one would be learning the fundamentals of how to hold the razor, what type of hair to use the razor on, um, just everything you need to know fundamentally about how to work with it. Day two is going to be more advanced, so working with different techniques, um, opening your blade, closing your blade, and um, more planing, different types of you know, layering techniques that you can do and different ways to hold it. A little bit more aggressive is day two, so day one is your fundamentals. So uh, coincidentally, Hallie Ortega is asking if you do these classes in New Jersey. And yes, Hallie, yes. the ECRU Academy is in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Very convenient to get to by train or, or parking. Um, and the classes happen here regularly. And if someone wants to see that schedule, should they head to the website? Yeah, check out our website at crewnewyork.com. And you can register online. And you can see this, the schedule as well. Now look how great this looks. I mean, I'm such a fan of like the multi-texture. So again, it's a bit harder and then into the softness here. Utilizing the length of the fringe on the side, really carving that out. Like she's got such a beautiful face. That's something that I always do is really pay attention to my client's bone structure. You know, don't be scared to carve it out and to open it up. It's one of the things that, like, kind of the long trend where the layers were just down here, yeah. that it was the worst thing about it because you couldn't do anything around the face. Can't see the face. So it's great to get into this, let's just call them shags, where there's more. Because even with long hair now, you can do something around the face. And again, the long hair is never going to go away. No. Uh, it's always going to be a big part of what you do. But to be able to add a little bit more to it, sure. add a bang, add a fringe, add some more layering, then grow it out, change it around, do a swing bang. That's what all this wonderful, wonderful technique is about. Yeah, and it's all about, you know, cha changing your client and suggesting things to your client. You know, it's, and, and wearing it yourself or having somebody in the salon wear it. When I want to change my clientele, I change myself or I change somebody in the salon. So here's an interesting question coming in. Uh, Terry Teresa Scott, she says a lot of clients complain about um, damage when they get their hair cut with the razor. She uses a guarded razor and she's wondering if using an unguarded razor, maybe it might feel a little bit different. You know, honestly, I, I think that you just need to work with the um, dampness of the hair. Yeah, so keep the hair really moist. Um, you don't, the drier the hair, the more shred you're going to put in and that's when you can start to feel the damage or your client will feel the damage. Um, changing your blade regularly. I change my blade every... Oops. Just okay. turn it around yeah. so we've got... The, um, so Tamara wanted to see the sections a little more clearly okay. so just turning it around there. Yeah, I change my blade every two uh, haircuts. So I like a really sharp blade. And I think that if you start doing practicing that, then you'll you'll have a different uh, result with your clients. Also, fine sections. You see, these sections are not huge that I'm taking. Yeah, so your pressure is really gentle. The blade's really sharp. The movement's really fluid, and the sections are fine. Yeah. So it's just like anything. It's the little things. 
It's like people could say, oh my God, bleach damages hair. It's not the bleach that damages the hair, it's the person who's using it. Razors don't damage hair either, it's how you use them. And yeah. sometimes it can be the tiniest little change you that see, can make um, the biggest difference. Right, like you, you cut air before you cut hair. I think that that's a key point as well. So you'll see that I'll get my blade moving before I actually start cutting the hair. So uh, Cicely Smith is wondering, with the shag haircut here, do you always start with the fringe? Like today you started in the fringe, do you always do that? No, but if this is gonna be my focal point, and if, you know, honestly, if my client is getting a fringe for the first time and her hair is like down here, I would rather cut the fringe first so she has 45 minutes to look at herself than uh, do it at the very end when it's five minutes and she might have a panic attack. But it's also, you know, this is the guide for my haircut. So I always start, um, you know, with the, the main focal point in the guide. Got some nice love coming in from Jane Costanzo. Amanda is awesome. Her tips for multi-texture and paying attention to client facial structure are vastly important. Yes, I'm coming to New Jersey with a crew. Thanks, Amanda and Hairbrain, for always educating the industry with the best of the best. Aw, yeah. thank you. Okay, so starting to drop the top down, like a recap for those who've just joined. You did the bang first, you worked with kind of diagonal back sections and over-directed forward and kind of razor crafted around the face. Yep. Now getting into that top. Now we're gonna go into the top. So, you know, when I'm working with the razor, I'm going to have to tilt my client's head. And, you know, something that as hairdressers, we have to realize that it's okay to move your client. Right? Sometimes we get in these really weird body positions that we won't. Well, you know, when I went to cosmetology school in the book, it said to never stand in front of your client. It literally, I was taught. Did you? Oh, yeah. I was yeah. taught that too. So I was taught to never stand in front of my client, that you always had to like stand like that. So even something simple like that, but then you learn that, you know, hey, it's okay. you got to move around to do yeah. great hair. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing hair for, you know, a minute. 20, a, a while. A minute. And, uh, you know, if I was did everything that they told me. Yeah. I never moved my clients. Well, that's the thing, right? Because right? you, can, you can be uncomfortable all day long in weird positions, but you can, or you can move the client for 40 seconds yeah. and be more comfortable. Yeah, and right. then, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna turn around so we can really see the back. Amanda, I'm gonna okay. walk you all the way around this yeah. way. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. I'm taking just a, a, prof, a center section, okay? And then I'm going to use my guide now the center piece here from my fringe, this is the longest piece. So this is gonna be my guide and I'm gonna work from short to long. And you know what, I, earlier I said I was going to disconnect the underneath and I decided that I wasn't going to do that because I felt like it might be a little bit too thin. So when I go through and refine it, I'm gonna just like carve out some underneath pieces that I think might look, work better. And that's okay, like when you're working, you have a game plan um, and if you know if you get a detour on your road then as long as you know where you're ending up it's okay so that's I just had a little bit of a detour and um, yeah so I'm going to tilt her head and I'm going to Are you okay over here mamacita okay all right and so I'm just gonna comb this out now this is going to be my elevation if she was to put her head upright and I was working with my shears, this would be at uh, 90 degrees. Again, working with the length of my fringe, the longest part of my fringe, as my guide. Now, would you say that that's a fairly open stroke or are you being a little bit more closed and can you explain that whole concept? Right, so working, I am a bit open and you can tell by the texture that's there. If I was working closed, it would be more of like a, um, a precision line, like a, a, blunt, a blunter line. And so the reason that I'm working open is because I wanna have a nice texture. And so short hair is gonna be pushing long hair, even though her hair is nice and fine, it is going to give her a bit more body. If I was gonna work closed, like I said, if it's gonna be a bit more of a blunt look, um, that would be kind of like if I was gonna cut a bob, right? So it's gonna be a bit heavier of a feel. So this is gonna have a bit more movement. All right, I'm gonna answer a couple quick questions. Uh, the comb is a YS Park 332 in carbon. Great comb for razor cutting and for lots of different types of cutting. 
that's available at Hairbrain Pro. Today, we're those for those of you who are asking, we're at the eCrew Academy in Fairlawn, New Jersey. We're working with Amanda Jenkins, who's the Global Education Director. Um, and we want to find, I'm going to talk a lot about that in a moment. Um, Amanda helps certify the educators all over the world for the brand here. Uh, and I know you're involved in Fashion Week and things like that. So give us an overview of, of what you've been doing. How long has it been that you've been working with the brand and, and what are the things you're doing? So I've been working with the brand now for a little over a year and a half. And in that year and a half, we've really just amped up our uh, education. So globally, we are um, developing a education curriculum for countries such as Italy, the Netherlands, Germany, Poland, um, you know, South Africa, Malaysia. We're really like getting our... So our... you're racking up those airline miles, huh? Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think that it's really important for education and for, for us to have a tribe. I always, I always tell this to the team. It's like we're building our tribe. And, um, you know, the, the more hairdressers we have on board, the more that we can uplift the industry, you know, we're real. I think it's important that you know education is the key. It's our lifeblood it's as our hairdressers. Life. Yeah. Everything can change, but that's never changed in this. Because I never met anyone who just picked up a tool and was a great hairdresser. No. They had to be trained and they had to practice, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, I still practice. I have mannequins at my house, and I play around all the time. There's. I don't know. I love, I'm kind of a hair nerd. Well, you so. should come to my house and see. I've got uh, yeah. 75 mannequins <laughs> at the moment. Awesome. Kelly's always like, can we throw this one out yet? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. So just to recap now, you started it in the center and now you're over directing strongly back. Yeah. Because uh, there was a couple questions. Are you over directing? And then reiterating why the head is tilted. Can you just explain all that? A couple people asking. Okay. So because I'm working with the razor, uh, I believe body position is key. So if I was going to work with the razor and do the elevation of 90 here and have her head straight up, I would have to do this. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But just for me, I feel like I have more control if my elbows are down. So that's the deal. Um, if I'm just going to have you Fica, put your head straight up straight up Fica. Yeah. <laughs> she's sleeping <laughs> so you know this is basically 90 degrees down the center right okay so now put your head down back over here so this is going to be the same elevation right and so i'm basically creating a concave so over directing everything to the center so the front area will also be a bit disconnected um, and so that, that's going to be fun to play around with. So that's why I'm doing that. Awesome. Lots of love coming in for the razor cutting and the tips. And again, it is what I love about Amanda. We've worked together many, many times in classes and shows. She always has like a, just a very simple way of getting a really beautiful result. And, you know, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about that, Amanda, where, you know, sometimes hair cutting can get very complicated. I think a lot of people or maybe even hairdressers are maybe afraid to get too much into hair cutting. You know, we have people that are really, really into color, but they don't do a lot of cutting. They do it quite simply. You know, where, again, I've always found your approach so simple that people can really grasp it and do well with it. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I just firmly believe that, you know, there's certain things that you can't change. You can't change, like, elevation, distribution. You know, all of that stuff will always be the same. And uh, sectioning, if, you know, I'm a big sectioner. Sometimes it takes me longer to section the hair than it does to actually cut it. Because the way that you section the hair, that's your, that's your roadmap again. And so if you just think about like, okay, I wanna, I wanna undercut this. I wanna create concave layering. Like I, I never try to reinvent the wheel. You can't. Advanced, in my opinion, advanced hairdressing is nothing more than the classics just kind of intertwined, the fundamentals. And you, you can play around with it by your sectioning, but you can't really change it, you know? And there's not really any need to. Yeah, you cut yeah. square, you cut round, you cut triangular, you know? Yeah, I always like liken it to the alphabet. It's like, if you're a writer and you're like, I don't have enough creative letters, <laughs> you're, you're kind of missing the point. I think right. sometimes young hairdressers fall into this trap. Like, and I can remember being that way. I remember the first time I heard someone say, there's only three things you can do to hair, layer, graduate and cut one length. I was mad. 
Right. I was like, maybe that's what he thinks, but <laughs> I'm more creative than that. And then here I am 30 years later, I'm like, okay, he really got it. Yep. You know, it's like understand the simple purity and then apply it, much like the alphabet. You've got these 26 letters and you can do a lot with those 26 letters. It all comes from the individual. Yeah. I always tell a story where when I first started doing hair, you know, I was only going to do cool people. I was only going to do rock stars. And that was it. And, that and I was so um, a visual. I was a visual hairdresser. And then, you know, then I realized that I wanted to do all their moms because their moms are the ones that have the, hair, the money. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had to, like, go back and, like, get my fundamentals back down and get really, like, technical. So I'm really technical uh, with my cutting. The visual comes with it. You know, it's, it's all one, in my opinion. All right, so again, recapping for those that are just joining us, we are here with Amanda Jenkins. She's working on a long, creative, layered shag shape. She cut in a beautiful fringe and some face framing layering with the razor. Now working on top of the head, positioning Vika's head in a, in a position that her body can be very comfortable, yes, creating a guideline in the center here, and over-directing, and I'll let you take it from there, Amanda. Yeah, and so I'm also, I'm working with the edge of my blade. So just to like, we talked a little bit about that my blade was open a while ago, but you know the difference between the edge and working with the body. So this would be the body, and this would be really creating a lot of shred. And her hair is so fine that I don't want to do that. So with it open, I am creating a lot of texture, but the, it's a sharper cut as opposed to on top. Less of that surface kind of yeah. uh, disruption that you'd get with the body or the flat of the blade. For sure. And I think that that's important. That's something that you would learn at the razor edge as well, is when to use the body, when to use the edge, and how to use it properly. How you doing, Mama? Okay. You good? Okay, good. I always like to check in with my hair. <laughs> and just, I'm just taking curved diagonal back sections and just over-directing everything into the center. And again, her head is tilted for my body's um, comfort. So can we talk a little bit about, about the brand Ecru that you work with, if people maybe haven't um, used it before or seen it before. It, it's a brand, independently owned brand here in New Jersey that is distributed globally. Um, and, and can you tell us a little bit about the products, the concept behind it? I know it's kind of a fashion brand. You guys are very involved in New York Fashion Week and things like that. Can you give us an overview, Amanda? Yeah, you know, we like to say it's, it's a boutique um, line you know we don't have a lot of SKUs you know everything that the products say that they do they actually do so we don't have a million curl products we don't have a million texture products um, yes we work a lot with fashion because we believe that it's a you know it's everything's a total look so whether it be you know your clothes you're wearing the job that you do you know everything is from head to toe is what we believe in so you know the products that we create, we develop, you know, we work really closely with our chemists. We own all of our formulas and, you know, it's a uh, cosmetic hair care. You know, every, all the ingredients are the best that we can find. And um, yeah, we just believe that healthy, beautiful hair is, uh, is what's important and what's key. And now what is, how does, what's the role in terms of fashion week? I know that every fashion week you guys seem involved and you're leading different shows. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, well, we work with uh, designers such as Flying Solo and, and Noka and uh, it's cool. Like they, they bring us in and, you know, we have all of our specialists and all of our educators globally will come in and, you know, it's great. Lisa Labosco is our creative director. So, you know, she creates the, the looks with the designers and, you know, we go in and some of these shows are amazing because there'll be a hundred models that are thrown in on us. And, yeah. you know, it's great to have a connection with so many hairdressers in the area uh, and globally that we can, you know, really now, How do you guys make a team for Fashion Week? Are they people that maybe come from the Ecru salons? Or if someone's out there and they wanted to get involved with the crew for Fashion Week, how could they do something like that? Yeah, well, they should contact us. They should uh, contact us through our social media. Um, and the best social media address? It would be a crew New York professional. And what's uh, yours? Instagram. A couple of people were asking to follow you. I'm uh, <laughs> Jenks, J-E-N-K, and then Z-Z-Z-Z. 
I was I thought I was funny when I did that. Yeah. <laughs> we should have put like eighteen Z's. Like Just four. Just four. Thanks <laughs> yeah. with four Z's. All right, so it's all coming together now. You really had these you did the fringe or the bangs, you did the face frame, this overlapping layering. It seems like you have all the components together. Now what are you looking for? So now what I'm doing is just like, you know, I always move the hair around. It's important to, to let the hair kind of shake and fall into place and see like what's going on because when she leaves here, I'm not gonna be with her and if it doesn't fall into place for me, then it's definitely not gonna fall into place for her. So I'm looking to see where I need to personalize. So I'm thinking like right around here, I need to do something. I'm definitely gonna take her length up I think that this is this is such a great length for clients right now. It's very on trend. So I'm gonna take her up to about here. It's also gonna make her look like she's got more hair, which will be fantastic. Um, I also like, and sometimes people, uh, when I teach this haircut in some of our classes, hairdressers get nervous because um, they're like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna cut her layers that short, right? But if you think about it, this is like almost, goes right to her cheek and when you want to create like any type of shadow effect or chisel you want to really go to the cheekbone so it's not that short it's just you know you can't be scared and you have to know why you're doing something if we were to keep that longer this would just be a regular collarbone haircut right yeah sometimes at least like one element in the haircut needs to you need to push it a little bit right for sure you know you've got a the bang is uh, uh, not too short or not too long, the face framing, but then that layering, having something a little bit shorter, it just, why it looks special, it doesn't just look like another haircut. Right, yep. totally. And I'm actually gonna go in now with my shears and cut the perimeter. And the reason I wanna do that is so that, again, just to have that multi-texture in there. So it's gonna be a bit thicker uh, through here, but I am gonna do it in more of a twist cutting type of way, so it, there is a bit of like, choppiness to it so again just going back to my fundamentals I always part everything down the center before I start just that's kind of like my way of road mapping myself and then just doing a classic classic like one length outline type of sectioning and why why choose uh, this kind of twist cutting rather than just cutting it right across the bottom because I think it's gonna give it a little bit more of a interesting feel, right? If I was just to come through and, you know, do a square line, which I'm gonna cut it a bit more square, um, then it's, there's nothing gonna be special about it, mm. right? And I like it special. So just putting in little, again, little simple twists, literally in this case, to give it a little bit of extra kind of pizzazz. Yeah, like, a lot, a lot of the times I talk about if you look in a magazine, right, and if you look at a fashion, if you take a fashion magazine uh, and you take a magazine that you would find at like the grocery store, right, the kind that the clients bring in and you throw away immediately when they walk in. Um, or at least <laughs> we won't that, name any or at least names, <laughs> we all know. Yeah, but it's, you know, it, it's something where there's going to be a bob, right, there's a bob in everyone, there's a long layer in everyone, but it's, it's gonna be the one that's in the fashion magazine that's, that's gonna stand out. And why does it stand out? It stands out because there's a little bit of inconsistencies and it, it's not so perfect. Is that, was that what you'd call kind of the editorial edge? Yes. As opposed to just looking kind of consumerish, and, and that was the idea with the brand E Crew, right? Is to kind of bring that editorial edge into salon friendly products. 100%. You know, it, it allows any, the best part about the product is that it's for any client. Any client can use the crew. Like, you have your, you know, our texture collection, which is what I'm going to be using today, which is very editorial. It's for, like, really the artist. And then you have the signature, which is very classic. It was the first one to come out. And then we have our curl collection. We really try to hit every single type of client out there. All right, so let's really explain this technique, uh, if you don't mind, Amanda. Okay, so coming through, and you can see I'm just taking vertical sections, and I'm just twisting. And I'm gonna twist each section a little bit differently. So like, I will go in on this one, I might go out on the other one. And I'm just like looking, I'm shaking, you know, letting the hair move. There's still gonna be an outline to it, so it's not gonna be completely um, destroyed with no structure. 
but there is going to be movement and there's going to be, going to be short and long bits, which I think is nice. And just show us, Courtney, a close-up when, when Amanda does one of these so we can see the movement of the scissor. Okay, so what I think is important is to lie your shear down flat. And I'm, you see I'm closing my shear slowly. Now, I'm also looking past. I'm not just looking here. I'm looking at my outline, the length. And that's when I can tell myself, okay, close more. Does that, you know, it's kind of like... You always want to look at your outline first. And I also go up at different levels. So I might be here when I start, and then I might come back down to here. But I also always cut it off right at my outline. Very effective to get that shattered edge without doing anything overly complicated. Yeah, there's no need. So you're alternating the twist in different directions. and. Do you find that that makes a difference? Yeah, because it's going to, short hair pushes long, so it's going to give her a bit more movement. Now that's a fine piece. Do you have to be more gentle with a fine piece? Yep. Yeah. yeah, totally. And sometimes it's nice to do like finer and thicker and finer and thicker. But for me, you know, sectioning, you, you saw that I did the fringe, then I did the sides, then I did the top, and it's... You know, again, it's like, just mark out and, you know, do your, do your map. My haircuts, I take half hour, uh, half hour to probably cut the whole thing. I book on a 45 minute. Um, and like I said earlier, it's kind of funny that sometimes it takes me longer to section than it does to actually cut it. So you're representing a crew as an educator and training people and doing stage shows, but you also still work in the salon. Yeah. Do you find that that's an important part of uh, who you are? 100%. I think that I'm a hairdresser. At the end of the day, I'm a hairdresser. I love doing hair. I love working on clients. I think that, you know, for me, um, it's going to be hard for me to educate people if I'm out of the, the loop, right? I, I love that I can talk to my clients. I know what clients want. I also love that I talk to hairdressers, and I know what hairdressers are wanting and needing and salon owners. Um, but at the end of the day, I love doing hair, and I think that that's important. Like I said earlier, I'm kind of a nerd. <laughs> How did you get into being a hairdresser? How did you start? What, what's your... Uh... <laughs> Honestly? Yeah, well, oh, we I, always I, ask for honesty. I was you lost a bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost. Uh, that's how I got to New York. I, uh, you know, I was living on the beach, and I didn't really, was, didn't really have anything going on. But what I did have going on is that I had all of these, the rich ladies that lived on the beach. And uh, if Ashley Kowalski is still on, she's now living in the Sarasota. Yeah, she which, moved back to the beach. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's her. So I, I, I would do these like ladies' hair for all their events and um, was working at a restaurant. And then I decided I needed to, to do something else or I was going to work on the beach for the rest of my life in a restaurant so I went to school and I ended up liking it. I had great mentors when I was in school. Ashley's still watching. Yeah. <laughs> Question from uh, Mariam Styles. She's wondering, she says the hair seems to be drying off. Is it better to do this dry or, or damp? What you're doing now? Well, you know, I always like a little bit of dampness to the hair, but I always listen to the hair, and that sounds weird, um, but if I... Hello, Amanda! <laughs> Cut me! <laughs> Cut me! <laughs> uh, but I look and I see what's happening. If I start to see that the cuticle is roughing up, then I add more moisture. But everybody's hair is different. Everybody's hair can... Um, take a little bit more. So you gotta learn how to listen to it. You, you listen. listen with your eyes, you right? Listen. Here's another uh, question from Tamara Valma. She's saying, uh, do you work with an assistant to finish the hair? You know, I used to work with an assistant all the time to finish the hair. And sometimes I still do. But even if I work with an assistant, I always go over and make sure that I have the last feel, the last detail. Everything is uh, done exactly how you know, the blow dry, I put the product in, I tell them how to blow dry it, and then I go over and I make sure that it's done properly. I refine everything. All of my clients are always refined, and um, I touch them the last. I think that that's important. Awesome. So lots of love coming in. People really learned a lot from the haircut, enjoyed it. Looks like we're getting into styling now. So let me 
After you spray that, I'll show the camera what it is and you can tell us why and why. Okay. okay. Yeah, so this is our texture, um, texture setting spray. Now that's a newer product and I really think that this is Smells going, lovely. Yeah. I think that this is going to be one of our hero, well it is one of our hero products. It's one of mine. Um, so the cool thing about this product is that there's so many different uses. You can use it as like a wet gel, you can use it as a blow dry product, um, you can use it as a setting product, you can use it with a hot tool. It's awesome, it's amazing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna blast her. I'm not really, I don't think I'm gonna use my brush at all, and I'm just gonna blast it just to get this nice texture in. But if you were here in the beginning, you saw how long her hair was, and you saw the big change that we have, like, I hope you're as excited as I am. Because I, think I mean, like lots of change. love. Everyone's saying she looks beautiful, and they're excited to try the technique. We had someone say they're going to actually try it today, yeah. which is great. That's the kind of education that I think Amanda always shares, is everyone can see it and feel like they can use it right away. It's not abstract. So great opportunity to work with Amanda. Uh, hands in, hair, doing actual um, techniques. Do you guys work with mannequins, models, both? We use mannequins. Yeah. I think it's really important to use mannequins. Yeah, it's, a safe, it's a safe zone. Nobody's going to have to speak to the manager. Yeah, it's yeah. safe. <laughs> if you want to take a hands-on training with Amanda, she's at the E-Crew Academy here in Fairmore, New Jersey. Um, Great facility, plenty of parking, easy access from the train. All you need to do is go to the website at crewnewyork.com and you can see the classes that you have coming up. So we talked about Razor and Edge. What are some of the other classes? So we have Cut and Style Progression, which is actually a really, really fun class. If you like cutting hair and you also like styling hair, we go through looks that we've done in Fashion Week, and then we will go straight into more trend-based shapes. So that's a two-day class as well. And we also teach you how to style the shapes out because so many um, classes I've taken before is that you just learn the haircut and you don't know how to actually style your client properly on trends, right? And teach them how to do it. So we really focus on that. I think that that's important products to use and um, Architecture of hair cutting is another one of my favorites, and uh, it's really about dissecting the uh, the haircuts and like terminology, body position, elevation, distribution, why. Uh, those are two. That's a two-day class that you know it's one of my personal personal loves. Awesome. Well, we can all see how beautiful this is coming along. Again, just with this product, which hopefully I'll get to take some of this home with me today. <laughs> this is the have. texture setting spray. <laughs> and uh, obviously, you know, big guys kind of fine hair. So choosing the right product, it's kind of like that hair where you want just one perfect product, right? And then maybe something for finishing. Yeah, but totally. You wouldn't want to put in 20 products in her hair. No, no. And you know, clients that have fine hair like this, they're scared of product. So if you can just show her right away, like, like feel how much hair it feels like she has now. Yeah, that's great. Just plumped yeah. it up a bit. Yeah, and like she's completely layered out, which is, you know, kind of like a, a taboo thing to do with fine hair, right? Right. So just coming through, now I always do this. I just flick the hair around. You know, some of my old students, they make fun of me because I would just go up this and yeah. do that. And I remember the, the <laughs> left hand thing. You always used to say like, so your left hand is your less dominant hand, so you should, <laughs> Yeah, it'll look yeah. more natural. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's just, you know, again, like when I'm not around, her hair is going to move. And if something doesn't fall into place now, then, you know, I need to correct it. And so this is when you'd be really looking in the mirror, pushing it around, and you're almost just looking for those few pieces that aren't sitting exactly the way you want them to. Yeah, like right here. I think that this needs a little bit of like texture, some refining some love. It's kind of a common place when you do a big bang like this is to maybe open it a little bit more on the hairline. Yeah, yep. yeah. And you can see that because my sectioning was like this, I have, there's a little bit more length here and then it kind of comes up. But it doesn't look like the, the Eddie Munster, right? And she can play around here. And she has a big cowlick, which she's never had a fringe before because people were always probably scared because of that cowlick. But if you make it thick enough, which is sometimes a big thing that we're nervous about as hairdressers, you know, it's going to lay it right down. 
That's a lot something. of love coming in for seeing how beautiful it looks from all over the world. You oh. know, gorgeous, hermoso, nice cut. Uh, Vilma, our, my good friend Vilma wants to try some of the texture spray. Nice. Okay. And just, you know, again, just coming through both sides. And that's just kind of lightening it up between the, the hairline and, and the bang itself, creating some space. Totally. Just coming in, just point cutting. I'm sliding this hand as I'm point cutting so that it diffuses any lines. But I still like it pretty heavy. That's kind of part of it, right? You don't want it to get too transparent, right? You just want to get a little space there. Mm -hmm. It's almost the juxtaposition of the nice weight on the line with all the layers. Totally. Yeah, and I think like it looks like she still has a lot of hair. Or it looks like she has hair, a lot of hair, which she doesn't. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Do, do you really find that, you know, I, I know a lot of people are afraid to raise their fine hair. But do you find that sometimes a really controlled action can make fine hair look a bit thicker? 100%. That's why I was cutting with the edge as opposed to the, the body, right? Yeah. So it was a bit more of a blunter, harder look uh, cut as opposed to really you weren't thinning. Out. You weren't thinning the hair, let's say. Use mm -hmm. a terrible word that nobody loves, but when the blade is flatter, it literally thins the hair. But when it's on the edge or tee to the fingers, you're getting a chunky cut. Yeah, and it sure. kind of so it's like little graduations within it that actually can make the hair fuller. Yeah, for sure. So I'm just gonna check this piece out because I saw something as it was moving, and I have a little bit of length that I need to just connect in, and then I'm pretty happy with it right there. You Is it common for you to go in and do some scissor work after you razor cut? Yeah, I always go in and refine everybody. Everybody's head's different. Everybody's hair grows differently. So I can use the same technique on four different people, but it's all going to come out differently because of the, their head shape and stuff. So it's important to go through and spend the extra time. And this is what makes clients come back to you as opposed to just bounce around. The they, personalization, the extra yeah. attention. You know, most of my clients just come in and let me do what I want because they know that I'm not going to take them too far well, you've off. You've earned their trust. Yeah, and that's I mean, important. isn't that, you know, I think that's still the most important thing as a hairdresser. You know, you saw how I did all the twist cutting, but it's, it looks very heavy, and it's, it's going to move around on her, which her hair is not probably used to doing. Looking beautiful. Again, I mean, it's just a row of comments of everyone saying how much they love it, and they can't wait to try the technique. Um, and, you know, the product played a big part of that to really bring out this incredible haircut. Yeah, this sure. the setting spray, yeah? Yeah, the setting spray. This is coming home with me. Yeah, take it, take it. <laughs> so um, just to finish it off, I'm going to use um, our texture styling balm. Again, this is the, the three products I have here are in my, my kit. I don't leave home without them. <laughs> if you wanna, yeah. if you wanna, you can put that in your pocket too. I'm sure it's gonna end up there. This is a big one, but it's going right, <laughs> in, right in here. You know, Kelly will be mad if I don't bring products. Right, out. right, right. <laughs> Gotta feed the beast. <laughs> okay, so just coming through, very little bit, a little bit goes a long way. That's what I think is really cool about our, our products as well, is that, you know, we don't have to like overdo it. You don't have to put it so much on. A little bit goes a long way because the ingredients are really great. Um, just coming through, you know, you don't have to... You shouldn't have to really style out your, your clients. Like, this is how I style my clients. I blast them dry. You know, the, it sh the shape should fall into place. I might have to use a brush on cer you know, certain textures, but you know, for the most part, it's very lived in, and I think that that's, that's what's key. Yeah, and I think it's, been, it's more appropriate now than ever. I know, having worked together for years, that a, a lot of the styling we've done has always been kind of hand drawing, but mm -hmm. do you see it now where it's like this huge thing where everyone's like teaching classes on hand drawing, which I think is incredible. Yeah. You know, it's finally this, this kind of shape, the layer, the, the razor cutting, the bringing out the texture with your hands is really having its moment in the sun, guys. And I think, you know, everything changes and it won't be around forever, but if you love this type of work, get on it now. And now this is our dry texture spray. And this is just, again, this is a nice hybrid between 
a dry shampoo and a working hairspray. So I'm just really spraying it on her fringe and maybe like the crown area. Clients, clients love this because it's movable. And that's really it. I think she looks awesome. I cannot wait for her to see it. Everyone thinks she looks awesome. So let's take off the cape, Amanda, and we get a final, final, and uh, say thank you to everyone that's watched us. Thank you yeah, to thank our, you so our friends here at Accru for supporting Hairbrain. They've become one of our sponsors this year, and we're really proud that they believe so much in education, that they bring a wonderful educator like Amanda to head it up, someone I have deep respect for. If you guys are interested in the brand, you should check out on Instagram. Yeah, Accru New York Professional. And on the website? AccruNewYork.com. And if you want to follow Amanda? Jinx with four Zs. All right, guys, thank you for <laughs> coming. Beautiful. How do you feel? You're amazing. Give it a shake. Shake yeah. it up. Yeah. All right, peace out. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for joining.